sorry if the there's some construction going on right outside. Is it like too too loud? Am I like? Um, I I can hear you fine. Like overall, okay. I do hear it too, but I, I hear you fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I know. I don't don't worry, man. I understand. I mean, it's it's yeah. all right. It's New York. There's always. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Parasite Podcast, and I am very grateful for our guest today. I have Clay McLeod Chapman, who's hanging out with us. We're going to talk about some of his books in the past that he's released, both novels and comic books, but also some of the stuff he's working on now and a new novel that he has coming out later this year. So, Clay, thanks so much for being here, man, and uh, you know, introduce yourself to the Parasites. Oh, man. That, you guys, you're rolling out the red carpet for me. This is awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm Clay, and... Uh, yeah, I super lucky that I get to you know occasionally write for Marvel whenever whenever they need something spooky, uh, maybe a little slimy symbiote. And uh, um, yeah, I've been I've been kind of making a pretty humble existence, just kind of spinning yarns, telling stories. <laughs> and I love it. And I'm I'm actually a big fan of yours. So one of our my viewers of uh, the channel, she's a big fan of Scream. Yeah, um, you know, the, the symbiote oh, character, and she created like a whole Instagram and Twitter account for Scream and just kind of stands Scream oh, all the time. Oh, wow! And, uh, and because of her like relentless love for, for your work, um, it, it, <laughs> it, it turned my eye more towards you. And yeah. I was like, All right, let me see what else this guy does. And I gotta say, you have an impressive library of work, man. Oh, um, and cool. I want to talk about some of it today and, and introduce hopefully some people who are semi-familiar with your work, uh, you know, to, to read more. And, uh, and also if they're just familiar with one of your work, like comics or novels to check out the other stuff you put out because you do film podcasts, like you, you're all over the place, man. And I, and I love it. Um, Master of none. <laughs> right. Um, but that's all right. Gr the grind is real and you got it going, man. So uh, first I want to talk about, uh, you know, novels and, and how, you first started getting into writing novels, what maybe what some of your inspirations were, and maybe how that kind of led you to Marvel. I mean, how'd you ended up over there? For sure, totally. Uh, you know, it's funny, like it, it, it's a bit of a circuitous story, but uh, for for writing novels and for for kind of fiction stuff, I, you know, I I started off kind of with a, a bit of a theatrical background. Like I was one of these kind of drama <laughs> nerds, drama kids in school. And uh, I always loved kind of performing these, these kind of off ball, oddball character monologues that I would write right. um, for myself to perform. Um, I, could, I, never, I could never get cast in anybody else's play. So I made up my own plays and <laughs> usually it would just be me kind of like, you know, talking to myself for 10, 15 minutes. And, um, you know, it was fun because since they were all monologues, you know, I, I, I found that there's this this kind of duality of text where I could say this this monologue is theater. But given the fact that it's a first person narrative, it becomes kind of a short story in of itself. And, um, you know, I started kind of bridging the gap or or maybe kind of like volleying back and forth between like using this text, these monologues that I would write and either try to publish them or get them out there as short stories. And that that's kind of how I segued into writing for fiction. Um, my first book was a collection of these short stories that were all first person narratives. Um, and I, you know, my, in essence, kind of my t tour, my, my kind of promo for that book was just doing these performances of, of those pieces. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, it was, it, that's it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was such a blast. Like, I I love it. Like, I I still, you know, if I had my druthers, I'd totally be just kind of writing these these weird character ballads. And uh, but apparently, nobody <laughs> nobody wants to buy them. <laughs> um, like, I just had to kind of adapt and evolve. And you know, uh, novels are are definitely you know, long form fiction tends to be more palatable to readers than than short. So, uh, or maybe that's what the marketplace dictates or says. Um, so I just started kind of writing, you know, expanding what would be like five or 10 pages into 200, 300 pages. And, uh, you know, tried to kind of like eke out a character or a narrator that would, would talk for that long as opposed to, you know, five or so pages. Um, 
but that that's all that's the fiction side of this stuff but you asked about comic books and um i you know like it's i i really really truly owe it all to to ellie pyle okay. uh, my editor uh one of my editors over at marvel um you know i given the fact that i started doing playwriting stuff like i you know, like 20 years ago it was like two probably like 2002 2003 maybe okay. um i was teaching a uh, a playwriting workshop a, like a workshop for high school playwrights and one of just it just so happened this was like a statewide kind of like workshop for students high school students in the state of virginia where i'm from and uh <laughs> one of the students was this this young woman by the name of ellie and i think she was like a junior at the time a junior in high school um she was great. She was awesome. Like you could totally see that she was going, <laughs> going places like very kind of like, you know, determined and ambitious and like had, had, had the stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, I, we didn't stay in touch. Like maybe we, we like every so often we would like exchange an email or something. Um, but like, like in 2009, totally out of the blue, she reaches out and she's like, Hey, I I am in New York now. I am I I'm a God. I can't even remember. But she was like an associate assistant, like intern something at Marvel Comics, um, and she was working for Steve Wacker at mm -hmm. the time. And she was like, "I work for Marvel now. Like, have you ever thought about writing for for Spider?" <laughs> and and I was like, uh, "Yeah." Um, Every nobody, day, <laughs> nobody ever asked that question. That's like the you know you want you. I, I I was just kind of blown away, and my whole mindset, you know, from the beginning, like early days on, is that like if anyone ever invites you, asks you to do something, even if you have no idea what or how to do it, you just say yes, and you just learn on your feet. You learn fast, um, and so like I got to like take a meeting with Ellie and her boss, Steven, uh, to talk about pitching Spider-Man stories. And uh, I, I honestly, like, I just cut my teeth uh, learning how to write comics because I would write the, the kind of like the back nine story, like the, like mm -hmm. the, the non-canon B story stuff, the stuff that would like exist, you know, like, I, I always use this as an example, but like, you know, like Spider-Man learns how to do his laundry or... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah just the, the fun in between stuff that's i like it i like backup stories because they're like oh here's something that it's it's not super invested but it's something you might not have seen like like you said like peter parker doing laundry it's like yeah. that may not sound like an interesting story but the way spider-man's life is it can be you know yeah i loved it because it was it it didn't have the burden of canon. Right. Like I, 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 if I'm being like totally frank, like I think I kind of buckle under the weight of, of canon. Like when there's like, when there's the responsibility of like, like long gestating, evolving threads of narrative, like, you know, like, oh, you can't do that because in issue 234, like that, this happened already. And, right. but when you're doing the B stories, it's just like, it, it exists in its own vacuum and like there's something so they're short stories like i know i just i love that <laughs> yeah there's a freedom there you know um i because i've had the uh, pleasure of working in comics uh working for top cow working for other companies um doing novels as well and yeah. it's it's nice to have that freedom where you come in and they go like you like you said someone asks you would you like to do something for marvel you're like but, but, uh yeah yeah that would be amazing and then uh, of course the answer is yes and uh and then they go well here's a cool backup story you could do I, I would uh, probably in your shoes be, feel the same way where I'm like, that's kind of freeing because it doesn't matter when this takes place. It's just a fun story to kind of just uh, get a peek into this, my perspective of this character. Um, and that's cool that it's someone you knew from your past who like, you were like, oh, I was teaching a class and met this person and years yeah. later. And, and that's what they always say. It's, you know, in this business, it's a lot of networking. It's a lot of who you know. It's a lot of random chance things. Um, you make an impression on someone and years later they come back to you and say, Hey, you made an impression on me. I'm in a position to do something with you now. Like, what'd you like to do it? That's, that's outstanding. And that's cool to hear. I really love hearing you talk about 
performance because your website, which is amazing, I highly recommend. I'm going to put a link oh. to that down below. Uh, Clay, uh, Clay, Chat, uh, Clay McLeod Chapman .com. Um, If you go to his website, it lists performances, films, um, comics, you know, everything has links to stuff like so you can purchase. It's an amazing website. You get a really good window into Clay's mind here who <laughs> you're from Virginia. I'm from West Virginia. You have this horror yeah, love. Yeah. Uh, Wheeling. I was born in Wheeling, West Virginia, okay. uh, way up north near. Uh, so Wheeling and then my grandparents lived in Weirton where he, my grandfather worked at a steel mill and that was right outside Pittsburgh where George Romero made a lot of his movies. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a big horror fan like you. Oh, and uh, <laughs> so when that's why I was like, you have no idea when I, once I started learning more about you, I was like, Oh my God, I got to talk to this guy one day. And I'm so nervous about reaching out to people. Um, not For because real? I'm, a, yeah, not because I'm afraid of a no. I just, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm too uh, like this, what I'm doing right now, the verbal diarrhea, I'm talking too much. And, uh, and I just want, I, I want the focus to be on you and, and your work. And, but I'm just like, I love your work. I, I became a big fan, like from the remaking, which is a, a novel you had done whisper down the lane, yeah. um, you know, ghost eaters, which I see. And, and what I also love about you is you promote other writers all the time. I always see you on Twitter, retweeting other people's novels, their works, their first books, their, their 10th books, whatever it is you're a big supporter of just writing in general and, and art in general, which I love about your, your, your page on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, and then you also did a podcast with Jordan Peele or for Jordan Peele's uh, uh, monkey paw called quiet part loud. Yeah. Uh, and so how, like just to focus on a little bit more on novels before we get into the comic stuff, um, doing novels and then into po a podcast with Jordan Peele, like, what were some of your big takeaways of learning from each of these novels I listed? And then how did you take of what you've learned and then your background in film and storytelling that way and lead that into podcasting? I mean, it's so funny. It's interesting because like the, the podcast uh, quiet part loud came about like, <laughs> it's so weird to think of it in these terms, but we started working on that right. Uh, right as the pandemic started like we i think like it was my last in person meeting was with my co-writer mac rogers uh in march 2020 i guess it was and we were like okay we're going to start working on this thing and like hey what's going on there's some weird stuff happening in the world right now um and so like that the entirety of that development and production experience to make a podcast, uh, it it happened kind of under the cover of this, this like the world, in essence, right. kind of like shutting down. So I think a lot of that kind of went into the the, the writing of it and the kind of development of it. But um, and, you know, it's such a it's a it's an interesting question, and I and I feel like with you know asking about the novels, I you know, we're, we're now in this world where with social media and, uh, you know, reviewer aggregate websites, like we're, we're kind of constantly in dialogue with, uh, with our audience. And, and I, and ultimately I think that's a really positive thing, like a good thing. Um, and that might be because I'm a bit needy and, 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 and like, like if there's something out there, I, I kind of need to know, like, I want to know, um, and that that's to the de detriment of my own kind of personal well-being. <laughs> but like, like, I just, I don't know, like, I can't, I just, we, we, I don't want to live in an echo chamber. Uh, so I've, I have succumbed to the larger echo chamber of social media and Goodreads and Amazons and, you know, um, but I do think the positive of it is that like you do, you kind of learn, learn about your craft and what audiences or readers are responding to and you know and, and i'm not saying this in kind of some pejorative majorative like way of like this is this is the way that one does it i think i think this is just kind of a thread or a facet of like how i've been doing it where like you mentioned the remaking which was a wonderful opportunity with uh i started writing books for this publisher called quirk books right. and and they've been like they've been so you know, supportive in this, like they give me an opportunity to kind of like tell a story and tell the stories I want to tell. And, uh, you know, by kind of like putting those books on the shelves and like hearing the kind of response and feedback you get, 
via social media and via all these places. Uh, you know, I, I think that like, I'm just kind of more aware of how my voice, I, I think I'm just trying to figure out where my voice kind of lands in this, this the schema of the, the, the kind of pop culture world at large. Um, because, you know, we're all like, there's no new stories under the sun. There, there's just different ways of telling them. And like, I'm trying to figure out like, how do I tell my story? Um, so I don't know, like I, I, the, the thread I'm trying to pull here is that like, if, if remaking was the kind of like first foray into a, a kind of social media landscape, publishing landscape, then Whisper Down the Lane was kind of a response to the remaking. And then Ghost Eaters was a response to um, Whisper Down the Lane. And uh, this new book that I have coming out in September called What Kind of Mother <laughs> is a response to uh, Ghost Eaters. And it, they, like, they're just, just I, I guess they're all just kind of like building off of one another. And um, that, I don't know. I don't know if that's healthy. I don't know if that's productive. <laughs> Uh, but it's kind of, I think it's just the kind of way that I'm working right now. Um, and, uh, but what ultimately the amazing thing about it is that it leads to all these kind of like permutations or these offshoot projects where like, if, if Jordan Peele says, Hey, we're going to do a podcast. You want to, you want to write it? <laughs> <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> they, they, yeah, you know, and, and that is, uh, you know, I'm coming from a very kind of privileged perspective where like, you know, I, I, I've been able to kind of put stuff out there long enough and, and find support long enough that like, I, I, you know, I feel like if you just stick it out long enough, somebody mm -hmm. pays attention. And hopefully that somebody is someone like Jordan Peele who can kind of make decisions, you know, if for you. <laughs> Right. You're like, I'm gonna do this thing. Like, who's with me? Like, um, you want to do it? And you just say, "Yes, let's go." Yeah. I'm, I'm. I mean, yeah, exactly. And the YouTube landscapes like that too. I mean, anything is like you. You just stick it out. Like, I remember I I started a YouTube channel like 10 years ago as I was kind of breaking away from comics. I still write, but I do like stuff on it. Like, like uh, I did a couple horror shows for something in Asia. Um, and then I did some, I'm writing a, a trilogy of novels right now that are coming out, um, starting next year. So there's like a, there's a lot of things that I work on, but I, I kind of started this hobby and I really just did it because I'm a brain aneurysm survivor and I had trouble talking afterwards. And I was like, really? and I wanted to, because before the aneurysm I was writing, I was drawing too, but I don't have a visual memory anymore. So I can't really draw. I can't close my eyes and picture an apple for, for example. So, um, so I switched, I switched to editing when I post aneurysm to kind of like find talent, you know? Um, and, uh, and I struggled with talking for a while and enunciating. So I was like, Oh, I'll do a podcast or a YouTube channel and start and nothing ever stuck for the longest time. And then I, one day I was just like, you know what? I love Tom Hardy and he's playing venom. I'm going to do this venom show. And I stuck it out. Even when there was like no views, I was just like, eh, it's cool. Like it's, I'm not doing it for views. I'm just, I just, I like talking about Tom Hardy and I like the character venom. And then here we are, 811 episodes I just posted today. Uh, and I, I posted your, um, the, this morning I posted your your issue three deep freeze of the Edge of Venomverse Unlimited. And I got plenty more to go. I mean, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna hit, even though the movie's on hold right now, we're going to hit episode 900 like in a couple months, I think. Oh so um, That's insane. Man. But it's one of those things where, you, like you say, you stick it out. You know, you don't really kind of listen to some of the noise. Maybe if someone has cr uh, criticism or feedback, you kind of want to go, okay, that's as a viewer, you like this. I'll try to make more videos like that. You know, I'll try to have more guests on and things. So that's ultimately why I reached out to you. Cause I was like, don't be afraid. You have people that like this guy. You need to talk to him and you like him. Like you need to reach out and talk to him. And and that's why I was so grateful that you, you, you know, were like, yes, of course I'll, of course I'll do it. It meant a lot to me. And even you watching my show and sharing it, I rarely even get that even with guests sometimes. So, yeah. um, so that's, that was really kind of you. And it, it made me like you even more. Um, <laughs> and, and it's, and, and speaking of what kind of mother, cause that's coming out through Quirk books also in September. Um, so again, guys, I'm going to put links to stuff down below to follow clay, to check out his website, to pre-order this book, um, to buy his other books. Like I'm going to have everything down below. So please go and click all of them and, uh, and, and become a fan if you aren't already, uh, because 
so you say you're not a big into lore and, and, and kind of sticking to lore, but I got to say as a, a, a lore fanatic, uh, especially with resident evil, but, but a lot with symbiotes and, and comic books, um, you've done villains for hire. You've done, you know, scream curse of carnage. You worked on creep show, which is a, a personal favorite of mine. Yeah. Um, alt, you did something with alter bridge. I love music. So like that's, that was really cool. And then extreme carnage. And then obviously right now you have the edge of venom verse unlimited series on the Marvel unlimited app, which all of you again need to go. I've mentioned it numerous times on the show. If you're like me and you're kind of budgets tight, you know, this is like a, a Netflix for Marvel comics. You <laughs> sign up for it and there's exclusive content like this book, edge of venom verse unlimited. Um, how is this through Ellie again? Like how, how did you end up coming back? Cause you were working on, curse of carnage with scream and then you came back and did extreme uh, carnage stuff with scream as well then you had a couple one shots king and black yeah all of us loved the demogoblin shriek thing uh -huh. you know and and you the yeah. stuff you do with andy like for someone who says they're not you know like they get scared by lore you really nailed the the yeah. the, the, the the core of those characters and and brought them to new light so how with that admiration I have for you and, and my, and the, my viewers do for your screen work, how did that lead you back to, um, to Marvel with edge of venom verse unlimited? I mean, you know, I, I feel like a broken record, but like, honestly, like it's, it's all, it's always about the editors mm -hmm. and like, I've been extremely lucky that like both Ellie and Devin, Devin Lewis, right. um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what, you know, how these decisions are made or who ultimately makes these decisions, but like, you know, I, I, pretty much like I'm sitting here and I'm always like, God, please let me, let this not be the last time I ever work for Marvel. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, please. Yeah. I hope so too. No, but it's, it's just so funny because like you finish a project and there's just no guarantee that it'll, that there'll be another one. And like, you know, what was amazing about Scream, Curse of Carnage, and that was like such a, I, I love that experience. Um, it was my first ongoing series. Um, and I I just felt like, you know, Devin, and that was Devin, and Devin really like, he went to bat for me and it was like, we're gonna, you're gonna tell this story. And, um, you know, Cullen Bunn, who had been doing it before, like, you know, like it was just kind of taking you know, all, all of that lore that you speak of, it, it ultimately boils down to characters and kind of relationships. And, and, and frankly, like Andy has always been such a kind of like complex character that you just want to kind of like honor that and, and, and like, like, you know, kind of pay respect and lip service to like what, what makes her character so kind of strong and, and and real like grounded frankly and um you know at the end of the day what made the biggest difference was just kind of using the foundation of what Cullen had did mm -hmm. and then been given the permission by Devin to kind of like take it in a direction that like I just like I I, I wanted to tell a story about you know family and mothers and you know the kind of relation like that kind of like idea of like what is the relationship between the symbiote and the host and what is that relationship like and like i don't know like it's uh it's pretty it's pretty wild um yeah i feel really lucky yeah that's amazing so when you said that about uh you know the the book's called curse of carnage and you were talking about family and i wanted to, you wanted to touch on that subject and it's so cool that you did that because whether you did it directly or indirectly you know, we've broken down when we started this show, it was just to follow Tom Hardy in the making of the films, but there's not news for movies every day, obviously. So I said, well, why don't we just do the whole 30 plus year history of Venom? And we went all the way back and started with the first appearance of the symbiote and worked our way all the way to current day. Oh so, so we have gone through and dissected and I, and it was good for me as an exercise, as an editor and storyteller to see what really makes these characters tick. And what I like is that you just said there, like carnage almost in every carnage story is seeking out a, a surrogate family of some kind. He's always looking for, he's got doppelganger as like the, the child, the stepchild. He's got shriek wow. as the mom, you know, he's always building, um, you know, in, in, when he took over that small town, he wanted everyone to be like him. There's a kid, there's a kid in there in Cletus that really just wants a family that he 
likes because he didn't like his original family, uh, you know? And what I like is that that theme played into yours. And that is, I think the curse of carnage itself is that it, that family thing passing down to, to Andy there. So yeah. I think you nailed it. I, I, I love that you said that um, because I always thought that in the back of my head and I'm like, I'll just ask him and you answered it already. So I'm like, Oh, even better. He's already on the same wavelength. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's cool, man. I mean, I I love that, and I, and so about Edge of Ven, uh, Edge of Universe Unlimited, like, you know, you mentioned Devin Lewis and Ellie, and I want to shout them out because I've actually mentioned their names on the show before. I pay attention to editors, I pay attention to writers, artists, everyone, and uh, and even though there's been times I've been like critical of certain editing, um, you know, snafus and stuff, I also also preface that always by saying, hey, this happens, you know, like this happens. I'm just nitpicking, but the, and it's also just my opinion. But um, but I I hear nothing but good things about Devin, um, for example. So, I mean, Devin's amazing. Um, Devin, I I don't know, like you when when I work with these these editors, like you know, beyond the kind of knowledge of the characters themselves, there's like a like a genuine kind of love for the the stories that they're telling, and like right. you know, it's always. I don't know. Like, it's just, it's, it's amazing how like it, you just always feel supported. Um, I, I feel like I've been supported and, and like, you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of small potatoes at in the Marvel stable, but um, you know, when you, when you feel like you're these characters, you're being trusted with these characters, right? It's like you're, you're in a sandbox with somebody else's toys and you just never know, like, you know, if you never know when you're going to play with them, like they're not your toys. Like you have to kind of be like, can I, can I play with your toys? <laughs> right. Yeah. You're at a friend's house playing with their toys kind yeah. of. But you know, it's funny because you mentioned Curse of Carnage and uh, originally like way, like at the very, very beginning when they first started talking about the project, it was going to be called Scream Daughter of Carnage. Um, and, it, and it just all goes back to that idea of like family and like, I don't know, like I really, I really feel as if there's no other kind of relationship dynamic quite like symbiotes. And um, with, with Scream in particular, with Andy as a host in particular, like there's, there's always this kind of notion of like, who are these people? And like, uh, you know, a, a symbiote is only as good as their host. <laughs> Right. And so like you have like the foundation has to be a solid uh, a solid human being or like that character has to really matter. And like what they're bringing to the table really matters. Um, and Andy was just kind of like just ripe with like, God, just like, I don't know, like all the trauma and, and the, the kind of like, I mean, she's literally been through hell and back. And I don't know, like that, that that just made for a really kind of complex character to then kind of drop in whatever the actual story was. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and just to, to wrap up on edge of venom verse, um, because this series, is it how many there is there 12 of them coming out, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. you write how many of them? I wrote six. There's, there's two writers on this. There's me oh. and Jay Holtham, who's amazing. And uh, I, I, we, we kind of balanced it out where like I would do the first half and he would do the second half. Uh, he did the, there was one that he did. He did issue four, maybe. Four. Yeah. Or, I think four. Yeah. yeah. President Venom. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll have, I, you know, today is Tuesday, whatever the date is. Um, and I'll have one more that drops in like a, I don't think it's next week, but it'll be the week after. And I'm so excited for it. And then, then Jay kind of takes over the rest of the run for the rest of the summer. Um, but yeah, it's just been like the two of us. I mean, it, like I, I have had so much fun with Edge of Venomverse because Jay and I basically had, you know, we, we kind of had our, our editorial meeting with Ellie and she was like, okay, we have 12 issues, 12 symbiotes go to town like what are who who are who are our symbiotes what are we gonna what stories are we gonna tell and quite literally I, I mean jay and i were just like uh can we do like 
can we do, uh, you know, can we do, you know, baby venom? Can we do <laughs> puppy venom? Um, it, it, it's amazing how like we just like really just got to go to town and they they gave us carte blanche. Like Ellie was just like, yeah, sure. And I mean, we pitched some really wild ones. There would be like, you know, Winnebago venom or <laughs> like, like a few of them just didn't <clears throat> didn't make the cut. But uh, that, oh, that would have been fun because there is actually like a living spider buggy on a on a yeah. multi in the multiverse. So that would have been cool to see a Winnebago venom with them. So with the, yeah, that's amazing that you're actually the twelve issues because they're clearly inspired by like horror movies too, which I love. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I got a definite like um you know poltergeist uh, uh, exorcist feel from the first one. Yeah, and uh, and I love like the th kind of a thing. You know, John Carpenter's the thing in the second one with the yeah. severed head. So I'm I'm loving these. I love that you're kind of pulling from your horror roots. And you actually, you guys and the Venomverse stories and the ones Cullen did before in the previous Edge of Venomverse, like all those inspired something I, I did on the channel. We want to do something big for episode 800. Uh -huh. So I have a lot of viewers who would love to write and draw comics one day. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to put my editor hat on. I had, I said, all of you submit your idea for Venom, for the Venomverse. And let's make our own unofficial non-canon Venoms. And I read them all in like a 40 minute episode and, and with some artwork and stuff. And it was just our way of like, you know, showing our love that, you know, this community, because I got to say, I've been a part of a lot of communities and they get toxic at times, yeah. but I really love the symbiote community. We are a bunch of weirdos and, and, we, <laughs> and we love each other for it, which I love. Um, so I'm sure you've been exposed to that, you know, being a part of us now. Um, yeah. So, so with, uh, with this, you know, um, wrapping up like your last issue coming up soon, you know, you talked about earlier how you, you know, playing with other people's toys and then you kind of want to leave them in a, a good place for the next friend to come over and play with them. You're kind of doing that now with, you set up this great Demogoblin story with these kids and the church and you kind of put a little button on that with your, your one shot with, uh, you know, scream. And I'm yeah. sure that like, and, and to me, I know without knowing the truth behind how that happened. I also know how it's like, all right, you got one issue. We got to yeah. do this, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but I thought you did a great job with it. And, and, and we praised that book when it came out. Um, but um, now, now the Demogoblin story continues in the new Daredevil and Echo series. So how is that like for you as like a fan now, you're like, well, I get to see that go on. Um, you know, how, how is that? What's that like for you now being on that end of the, yeah. the you know, writer side? It's interesting. I mean, you mentioned, you know, you're talking about, gosh, Curse of Carnage 6? Yes. You know, it like COVID took Curse of Carnage out. Like yeah. when when the whole, you know, when the stores shuttered and all the, the kind of distribution deals kind of collapsed, like it was it was such a bummer because Scream was one of the series that like we had we were on issue, God, nine. I had scripted, like I had arced out, you know, the next five issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, who had been doing the artwork was already on issue seven or eight. Uh, I was like a script or two ahead. Um, it, I, I mean, there was, there's artwork, there is, there is script, like, like that thing was like off and running. And it was right before issue six was coming out that they were like, okay, so we don't have a distributor anymore <laughs> or, and like, you know, like, so this is all getting shuttered down. We're going to, we're going to say goodbye to scream. Uh, and uh, yeah, all that, th that's gone. Um, and it was just, it was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Um, and nobody's fault. Like it was just, you know, this right, exactly, you know, but you know what we, you were saying before um, about the one, -off, all those one offs and the kind of the King and black one offs in particular. I, and I, and I, I've said this before and I, I need to say it again and again, the, the scream and symbiote fandom, the, like the, the kind of like the community that you you're speaking of, they were so vocal and and adamant and passionate about that series and that story and that character that Marvel listened and yeah. and and Devin in particular, like I think he actually was very kind of aware of what was happening um, to the extent 
and and I and I feel like it when this happens, it very rarely happens this way. Right. But like the fandom spoke, Marvel paid attention, and they're like, oh, people really like this comic, th this series. They they weren't gonna bring it back. Like the series was dead. Like that was that was, but they they did kind of make the concession that like well let's do like let's bring this let's finish the story in some shape or form or let's let's do let's let's continue it enough so like all of the the kind of one shots the one issues that i did that was purely based off of the fandom you know people being so kind of like outspoken and like rallying to get scream back um to the point where Devin would be like, wow, people are really like, like everyone was kind of like pleasantly surprised. Um, and, and yeah, I owe it. I owe it all to, to you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Cause yeah, the, the young lady I spoke of, her name's Allie and she's a, she had like a scream Twitter account and back in during COVID I had deleted Twitter. But before I did, the last thing I did was I joined in that echo of getting that book, like, you know, making noise for it. And I would retweet her stuff because she was posting like by the hour, just, you know, amazing stuff. She'll like take a, a panel and manipulate the dialogue, you know, please bring the book back, you know, show like she went all in and, uh, yeah. and I saw that, that level of passion and um, it was awesome. I'm glad it was heard. And I, I'm glad, I mean, that's really cool of you to, to say, Hey, I got another chance, you know, yeah. with one shots because of fans. That's amazing. man. um, so to, to wrap up, because I know you, you got, you're very busy today and you were very kind to take time out to talk to us and talk to the parasites. Um, but I just want to, I just want to get like um, a little plug for your upcoming book. Um, and then also, um, you know, obviously we've been plugging Edge of Venomverse. So I'll tell people, please get the Marvel Unlimited app, check this book out. It's really, really cool. It's like, and I love as someone who's like, I grew up with like my, my inspirations as an editor post aneurysm were. Archie Goodwin um, and um, and Mark Chiarello over at DC, and he Mark Chiarello did this project called Wednesday Comics, where all these amazing artists were drawing not normal comic book pages. They were drawn really big and, and everything. So your artist on on Edge of Venomverse, I love because to yeah. do to do these cool and he and he explained to me how he kind of does them um, to like cheat it a little bit, but to have this ongoing scroll of a comic yeah. that you just. I love that format. I think it's absolutely amazing. And it's got to be so fun to write and work in and because it's different. Um, yeah. What did you, what kind of takeaway from this experience have you learned from writing in that style that you hope to apply in the future? And then if you could end by, you know, plugging what kind of mother, because I'm very interested in reading that book. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, Philip was amazing and all the artists and colorists for, for the Edge of Venomverse has been, it, it's just such a, it's just like a different way of looking at comics. Like I, mm -hmm. I'd never done an Infinity series before. And, and the idea that like, it's not, your, your eye is not going side to side, but it's going, it's, right. it's doing this. And like, you know, you're, that you're the, the kind of swipe, the scroll is just like, it was just so cool because it made it made me as a writer kind of recalibrate the way that I script that like how do I tell the story like the format is different the format changes the way you tell the story um and that that was kind of liberating to a certain extent like it was it was it was definitely um a challenge at first but like it, 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 it's almost like you kind of put on a new pair of glasses with a better prescription or a different prescription. And like, all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, this is what the world looks like. And like, um, yeah, I, I loved it. And, you know, as far as like what to take away from that into kind of future issues, like, I don't know, I've, I've been pretty kind of crassly vocal about uh, lo loving the idea of any one of these particular Venom characters, like having a, you know, a future life and ongoing series or some continuation of their story. I think puppy Venom would be adorable. And like, you know, like who, who doesn't want a puppy Venom ongoing? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I would dive back into infinity at the drop of a hat. Like I, it's just been, it's just been fun, honestly. Um, and then, you know, as far as what kind of mother goes, like it's, it's a, the new book comes out September 12th. Um, 
It is a, I was going to say kind of a true crime, but not true crime. It's like a thriller, like Southern Gothic folk horror, like blend. It, 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 I mean, like it just, it, it kind of defies easy categorization because it, it, it starts off as one thing and it quickly evolves maybe devolves into something totally, totally different. And uh, yeah, you just got to go for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, yeah. And, and, and actually I know it's a, a sound in the background, but hearing you talk about a horror story with chainsaws in the background is so perfect. I know. <laughs> it's like, it's I so timed awesome. that perfectly. Yeah. And it's raining to everyone. He, he, he called in every favor he had. That's awesome. So yes, everyone who's watching this, like, if you haven't already fallen in love with clay like please go check out his stuff like i really am i'm i'm a hardcore fan now and uh, you will always have a fan in me on this channel and even if one day if i don't do this channel i'm always going to read your stuff and check it out and and I, now that i'm back on twitter i'll retweet it and share it um you're an amazing dude and, and i really I, I don't ever stop doing what you do man you're wow. very talented Let's get to episode 900. Let's get to episode 1,000. Let's just, <laughs> just keep on going, man. This is amazing. My my plan was to, once we hit 500, I said, all right, I'll make a deal with you guys. I'll go to 1,000 at the minimum. So so 1,000 is our minimum. Uh, wow. we'll, we'll see what we do after that. But yeah, um, yeah, because I'm not, I, I, don't, I haven't burnt out. Like I have moments where I need breaks, but that's just because life stuff gets in the way. Yeah. Um, but, but I have not burnt out. I love talking <laughs> about symbionts and venom and everybody. It's, uh, it's very great. So, uh, you know, I hope you get to add more to the universe, but what you've already added and what you're adding currently is fantastic. And we're going to keep reading edge of Venomverse and keep shouting it out every week on this channel. Thank you, man. That means a lot. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below. Follow him. I'm going to put all the links down there and we will definitely see you all in the future. Peace. <laughs>